Okay, so you can see, just like before, right, you've got two values here, right, that define where you are. There have to be two values because you're in a two-dimensional space. Here, my two values are different, so I'm going to give them some names, right? Um, I don't have x and y, I have r and theta, okay? So what's r? r in this scheme here, it's called r because it's about the radius, right? Uh, but because we're going to start thinking about, like when we were drawing, you don't have to draw this, um, but when we were starting to represent complex numbers on our argon diagrams for the first time, circles are nowhere to be found. They're, they're kind of implied, if anything. So if I said 3 plus i, you just, you know, here I am. 1, 2, 3, 1. Okay? So it's like I don't need to think in terms of circles here, right? So even though I'm going to keep on using this r, Protein rule, because why, why introduce a new one? Uh, I do want to introduce a new word to indicate it because it doesn't make much sense to say radius when I'm referring to this length. Because radius of what? I need to introduce a circle where there's, there's no necessity to do that. Okay. So we say R is the modulus. Modulus, so M-O-D-U-L-U-S, is the modulus, which is the distance from the origin. R is the modulus, the distance from the origin. And theta, we also give a special name to. We call theta the argument. Argument errors. Okay. Um, really, argument is actually a very broad word, which means you know something which you stick into a function. Okay. But in, in mathematics, it seems this is like the main place the argument is used. So even though, strictly speaking, I could say, you know, if f of x equals x squared plus 5, right? I can legitimately say x is the argument in that statement up there, okay? But um, that's, that's more of like a, a software and an engineering point of view. When I say argument in this classroom, I'm referring exclusively to this angle business, okay? Theta is the argument. The angle subtended from now. Where is this? Where where do we where do we describe this? Now we actually have some symbols of some language now. In the past, I used to have to say the positive x-axis, right? I'm not on an x-axis here anymore, though. In the complex plane, what's this called? Real axis. This is the real axis, right? And this is the imaginary one. Okay, so I'm going to borrow some of the language and notation that I've used before, and I'm going to say the angle subtended from the positive real, right? This is my symbol that I'm using for real and for positive axis. Done. Okay. So this is a huge new idea. Yes. Does it always have to be from the positive real axis? Yes, it does. Now, why does it have to be from the positive real axis? Um, I want you to think back to when we were doing our multiplication, right? And you notice, when I multiply by numbers, which way do they go? And necessarily, when you start just putting in numbers, and the example we chose was I, right? You're going from here anti-clockwise, right? You're going, you're going that way, okay? So therefore, it has to start from that side in order to make sense for it to go in that direction, okay? Um, otherwise, the mathematics, it all goes backwards, okay? So that's why we begin there. Okay, so um, now a name for this. Um, this is this is in coordinate form, right? I've got x's and y's, so you can kind of call it Cartesian. In fact, textbooks will often use this, despite the fact that this is not the Cartesian plane; it's the complex plane. But there's no argument as to what this is called. There's a modulus. There's an argument. Okay, so we call this modulus argument form, or to be a little more brief, mod. mod uh, oh, I guess that. Okay, so this is our contraction, and you'll be asked to uh, to state it like this all the time. Okay. Now, draw for me a um, draw for me a new complex plane, please. And for this one, we'll mainly make it first quadrant. Uh, I don't think they, they have to. They are coming to school today, but they're only coming for the test. Oh, because so they don't have to be. 
Oh, I see. <laughs> All right, now, what I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me, is I'm going to rehearse this result, but now, you know, because before we were on the unit circle, everything was real, now we're going to stay in the complex world and we're going to um, draw some implications out of it. Okay? So, uh, let's pick a point up here and we'll call this Z, right? This is our complex number. So usually I would um, I would represent this as x plus i y, and that's still fine. Actually, you know, well, let's let's just write that. It is still fair to name that and represent it as x plus i y. But I want to try and transition away from it. Okay. So I'm going to put in place my triangle here. Okay. Wow, that's a really bad horizontal line. Okay. There we go. It's good enough. This is, um, this is now the complex plane, okay? So I've left my unit circle behind, even though the unit circle is there, kind of in the background, helping me understand this thing. If I have theta here, right? This is the argument, okay? This is the argument. But because it's the argument of this particular complex number, Z, right? I'm going to name this, like, so that I have a, a language for it, I'm gonna call it the argument of Z, right? Finding the argument of a complex number, that's just a function, right? So therefore, I'm just going to say uh, arg of z, or arg z for, for short, is that angle, okay? Now, I've also got mod z. Where is mod z on this diagram? It's the distance from the origin, isn't it? So it's up over here. It's on the hypotenuse, okay? So I'm going to say r equals mod z. Now, this mod guy here, he comes up a lot, and he's very, very important. Uh, or she, who knows what, anyway. So, I would love some more concise notation for saying this, rather than saying mod this, mod that, it's a bit of a pain. It's short of a modulus, but still. Now, if only I had a piece of notation that already meant distance from somewhere to the origin. Distance from somewhere to the origin. Oh wait, I do have notation for where a number is and how far it is from the origin. You just haven't been calling it modulus. You've been calling it absolute value, right? Do you see how, remember when we talked about absolute value? I said there's all these different ways to understand the name uh, and give it a different representation, give it a different definition. I said way back, did you see me? I was sowing the seeds. The best definition for the absolute value of a number is how far are you from zero, okay? How far is negative five from zero, and the answer is it's five away from negative zero. It's not just that I leave off the sign, it's that I'm trying to work out distance, and distance is a positive value, okay? How far is 100 from the origin? Answer, 100, and so on. How far is Z from the origin? Well, that's the modulus, by definition, okay? Now let's just fill in this a little bit, because in order to work out this number, this is a hypotenuse. I know how to find out hypotenuses. I use Pythagoras, right? I just need to know what these other two lengths are, okay? So let's just fill it again. Um, I've got this horizontal length here, which is going to be r cos theta. And I've got my vertical, which is r sine theta. So that gives me this alternative way of writing. I've got r outside of cos theta plus i sine theta, okay? 